Let's loom knit these zigzag fingerless mitts today on Good Knit Kisses. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. We're making these zigzag fingerless mitts today, and we also have it in a needle pattern as well in right or left handed for both the loom and for the needle. This pattern features Chic Sheep Yarn by Red Heart. In contrast A, we're working with Mai Tai. In contrast B, we're working with Green Tea. For the needle pattern, I'm using a blue for pull side in contrast A, and then B is Mai Tai. I also am going to do three sizes. I'm gonna show you in one size, but I will talk about and tell you the differences in the video on the three different sizes. All the rows are the same. It's just a matter of casting on and uh, one little change here in the thumb hole. All right, so we need two different colors and then you need your loom. The loom that I'm using today is an adjustable loom. It's a sock loom from Knitting Board. You need a 3 8 spacing between the pegs or a small gauge loom. And this one is adjustable. I can just take this part and loosen it and make the slider move. You can use the all-in-one from Knitting Board. So this is the sock loom too, or you can use the all-in-one, whichever one will get you the right amount of pegs in, in the round. 28 pegs in the round are needed for the small. 32 for the medium and 36 for the large. Grab your supplies and let's begin. To begin, get your loom set up. Go ahead and adjust your bolts and get it dialed in to the right peg count. Go ahead and put your stitch marker on the first peg and we'll begin with our cast on. We're gonna go from cast on all the way to the bind off and stitch in our tails together. So once we have all the right peg count, you don't need to worry about any changes in the sizing until you get to the thumb hole. So um, don't worry about which size you're working on as soon as you have those in. Go ahead and start with a slip knot and place it on your first peg here. And we're going to use the true cable cast on. For a slower video, be sure and click on the link in the description below to do that one. And I'll do the first couple of stitches we're going to put our working yarn around the front of this peg here and you'll pull a loop down from the working yarn downward make a new loop flip that loop and place it on the next loop and then tighten it up okay move your working yarn in the direction that you're um, working in the round I'm going this direction and I go in between the next two pegs and yarn over with the yarn at top pull down a loop make a new loop Flip it, place it, and then pull it in, and just continue. So I'm gonna continue going around all of my stitches. Do that for yourself, and I'll meet you back up at the end and show you how to um, finish off this part here. As you're going around, you're gonna notice there's only one loop in the front of the pegs, and then there'll be two loop in the back of the pegs as you go, and that is correct. All right, pause your video. I'll see you at the end of this round. See you soon. I do want to stop and show you as I'm turning to the inside here, we want to turn our loom and you can still work it in the same way. You're gonna wrap your yarn around, okay? So that yarn is on top, pull down your new loop and then you take that new loop and move it around to the inside of the loom this way. Flip it and then pull back and you can keep going. It is a little bit more difficult on the inside here, but there's only five pegs, so it shouldn't take too terribly long. And then when you get to the end of the fifth one, you're gonna address it the same way that you just did on that last one. All right, I'll see you at the end of your cast on. See you soon. At the end of our round, we're gonna pick up the last stitch and the first stitch and switch them. And this is a trick that gets your uh, knits uh, really nice in the end and you don't have that little jog. So now I'm going to tighten that up and then I can work my first stitch on this first peg here. All right. So we're going to begin by working a ribbing which is a two by two. So we're working two knit stitches and then two purl stitches and repeating all the way around. And that's why our pattern is divisible by four. So we want to knit the first stitch and we're just doing a unit stitch. 
And I'm making sure that very first one is nice and tight. All right, so now I've got those done and we want to purl. If you haven't done a purl before and this is your first pattern, I'm glad you joined me. Be sure and subscribe for more information and so for some slower tutorials, be sure and check out our beginner uh, playlist there. All right, so for the purl, put your yarn down below the loop, scoop it up to make a new loop, take the old one off and replace it with the new one. And that's it. You're going to want to go all the way around, continuing the knit two, purl two, until you have reached 12 rounds. And you'll want to have a little marker to count how many rounds you've done or write it on a piece of paper. So 12 rounds, I'll meet you back up at the end of the cuff. See you soon. Now that we've completed our stitches in the cuff, we move on to the main pattern. This is the zigzag pattern and it's completed by using four rounds all the way around. We're going to alternate between the two different colors and we'll start with what we've already been working with which is contrast A. We'll start with a purl stitch and then we are actually not going to work every other stitch and the way we do that is we slip the yarn but we're slipping it in front of the peg instead of holding it behind the peg. You don't wrap it or anything other than just hold it in front and then you move on to the next stitch which is purl. So round one is purl and then it's slip with the yarn in front of the peg. So we end up with two strands of yarn. See that? One, two. Doesn't matter if it falls above or below this line. In the next round it's going to get knit. So do that again. We're just going to hold it in front of the next one and skip and purl. So slip, purl. Hold with the yarn in front of the peg. Pause your video and we'll see you at the end of this round. Round one has now been worked with all of the slip stitches done. Make sure that this last one has it over and you're ready to begin your next color. For the second round with B, we're going to knit the first stitch. So you just lay your tail on the inside and knit this first stitch. And then you're going to knit one below the next stitch. And because we set up on the previous round, you don't have to do anything here. You would have to be taking it off of the uh, worked yarn back here and then put it back on. But because we held it in place, you don't have to do that. So we just knit these two stitches together. It's technically a knit one below, just like a needle pattern. So actually this one is this round is very simple. You just continue working around the loom in this one color, making sure to knit over all loops remaining. All right, meet me back at the end of this row and we'll work on the third round. See you soon. We're at the end of the second round, make sure your yarn that's being held in front is to the back. And we're gonna wrap around and knit those two stitches together and then knit one below. Just like that. And now you're going to continue with B and we're going to go to the front of this first stitch here and we're going to purl. So it's going to be the same as row one on, that we do on row three. It's just with the second color. So I purled that one and now we're just going to hold the yarn in front and then purl the third stitch. So every other peg is getting purled and the rest of the time the yarn is hanging out in front. So there we go. We're going to continue on with that. Pause your video. I'll meet you back up for round four. See you soon. All right, we're finishing up the third round and we need to still slip this yarn in front. And then we've got to start working with A again to start the fourth round. And the fourth round is going to be exactly like the second round was where we're knitting all the stitches. So what I want to do is actually take my yarn and leave this fourth, this uh, last peg unworked and I'm going to grab A from underneath it, okay? And then now I'm going to actually just work this first stitch, okay? So I can work this first stitch, knit it, and now I'm going to move B to the back. So I can continue working with A and it has got this uh, yarn all locked in. So just going to work all the way down 
knitting all the stitches together. And if you notice, whenever we have yarn held in the front, it always matches the color that was the row before, round before. So you'll never have two different colors being held together. If you see that you've done that, then you may need to go back in your pattern, work your stitches backward and find where you need to begin again. But this way you know that you're on the right track. So you're gonna continue this round a four and then you'll be done with the zigzag stitch pattern. So you're gonna work these four rounds eight more times and you will be ready to begin the thumb section. Pause your video and I'll meet you when you're there. See you soon. All right, I'm ready to move on to the thumb section and I've done my last stitch and twisted my yarn. The way to know that you are ready is you can turn it over and count how many times you see color B, your contrast B coming across. So you have eight repeats on this pattern plus the ninth one here that was the first. So you can count the Vs in this color. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then way up back here is nine, and you can confirm that right here. You can also turn it inside out, uh, but you gotta be careful about where you're actually looking. You wanna see this one that's attached to the back of the peg, and so when you flip this inside out, you can see exactly where these long pearl bumps are and count them there, and that's the easy way. So for the first two rounds on the thumb section, you just need to work uh, them exactly as you did before. You're going to be working with A and start by purling and then holding the yarn in front. So purl with the yarn in front like that and moving on to the next one and continue on with your second color as before. Pause your video and meet me back up. I'll give you a tip on starting that third round. See you in a moment. So round three, we are on B color, and we want to work with this stitch marker that we've set aside. So I want you to count eight from the end. So we're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and place it on that peg. And you're going to continue round three just as you have been working it uh, where you purl the first one and then purl with the yarn in front and stop right before this stitch marker here. So round three as usual, and then we're going to work the last eight stitches different than we normally do. Pause your video and I'll see you in a moment. See you soon. Up to this point, you have worked all the way up to this area here, and then you worked two more rounds. And this line goes all the way around and it stops right here. We are now going to work these stitches here for the thumb hole, and we're gonna be binding off the next six or seven stitches. If you have a small size, you're gonna bind off six. If you have the large, you're gonna bind off a seven. So small and medium are six, and then the large is seven, and then we will finish out the row, and then we'll put them back on to continue in our pattern. So what we do is take that stitch marker off. We're still holding the yarn in front of this one here, so bind off the next two stitches, which is the eighth in here. So we're gonna knit one, and then we're going to knit two, take the two, and put it over the one, and then lift up and over, and that is going to bind that stitch off. Now you can pick up what I'm calling the one and move it to the empty peg, okay? And now you can see how that stitch is still held over, that pearl with the yarn in front, it stays there. And we're gonna go to the next peg, and we're gonna still gonna call this two. So we knit the two, and then we're gonna pick it up and we're gonna put it on the one and then knit over. Now, be sure, and from this point on for the rest of your bound off stitches, don't pull too tightly. We want it loose enough uh, to be stretchy for our thumb area. We're gonna pick that stitch up and over, move it, and knit the next stitch and continue. So, the way you can tell how many you bound off is that's how many empty pegs that you will have remaining. I'm just gonna continue the entire thumb with you. Pause your video as you need. Okay, now, I have five empty pegs, one, two, three, four, five, and I still need to get the sixth one done. 
So we're going to work this next peg here, pick it up and move it over and knit and then move it over. All right. And so now we have six pegs that are bound off. All right. And then we have two pegs left, but we've already worked this peg here. So now what we do is purl this next stitch. So the directions are to purl to the end. All right, so we've got that one. And now we are ready to move on to our fourth round. We're going to pick up our yarn. Let's see, lay this one down. There we go. Pick up A and start working it as the second round where we knit and then knit one below. Okay, and we just continue and we'll go all the way around until the first bound off stitch. And this is where we will start casting on here. And I'll show you in just a moment. Pause your video and meet me back right here. See you soon. All right, so fourth round, we have continued till the bound, first bound off stitch right here. And we're gonna cast on the remaining stitches that are empty using the backwards loop cast on. Of course, for the large, you'll have seven. I have six here and then we knit to the end of the round. So the backwards loop is just taking this yarn and you can flip it by twisting it around your finger and put it down this way. So let me do that again. We'll pull our yarn out. It's also called the thumb cast on, but sometimes my thumbs are all thumbs <laughs> and I can't do it right. So we're just gonna pull the yarn out, take our finger and wrap it around and then twist it and place it on. Okay, and then I use my loom pick to make sure and get it nice and snug. I don't want this to be um, too loose. And we're just gonna turn it and continue doing it again. You can take two fingers at the same time and use that to place. That's another method. Make sure, get that on there. So this is the two finger method, pick up your yarn Take your two fingers, wrap it around, and twist at the same time. See, like that? So pull it up, twist it, and then place it. All right? And last one, twist it, and place it. And you're ready to work the rest of the round, which is knit till the end of the round. So just knit these two stitches. I like to pull this last one a bit tighter just because it's going to have just that little leading edge there, and I want to make sure that... Um, the stitches are nice and snug for the, that thumb. And so what you've created is this spot right here. Okay, that's that part right there. So you wanna make sure and get that tightened. You can tighten it up in the back by turning it inside out later and messing with it, um, but it, it really works uh, well for this simple thumb design. So your thumb will just come in and rest right in here like that. You're now ready for the mid top of the pattern, which is above where we've created the thumb hole. You're going to repeat the four rounds to make the zigzag pattern. So it actually begins right on top of where this opening is. So from here to here is the first four rounds, and then you're going to do it one more time. And then only the first two rounds, because once we get to here, we will start the cuff section again. So on all three sizes, small through large, you're going to do that. So make your zigzag and go around. Now the only challenge is the first time that you work this, you're going to be um, coming to the section where you've got the cast on pegs here. Now the cast on pegs are going to be a little harder to do and I will uh, go ahead and come around and show you doing a few of them just so that you can um, see me actually making them. I'll see you in just a moment. All right, so I'm gonna be purling this first cast on stitch here. And it may be just a little tight, but because it's a little different, I wanna show you. I just use it to uh, use my larger loop to pick it off the loom a little easier, or you can use your fingers and then just put it right straight down. All right, same as before. And then we're gonna hold this over here and then do the same down on the end and purl and continue. 
So then the round after, you will still knit all of these loops, even these two over one. So that's the same as you've done before. You're just gonna continue going around, finish those uh, two rounds out, which is eight, and then do the first two rows. So it's actually 10 rows from here to here, and then we'll start the cuff. See you soon. Okay, I just finished my last round of round two after we've repeated um, basically 10 rounds after our thumb hole. And I've knit this one over. I want to go on to the next portion, which is the cuff. So you're going to continue by repeating a ribbing of two by two. So we're going to knit two and purl two. Now, you will not be using color A anymore, so you're going to continue on doing that. So you can get color A away by just cutting it a nice long strand and uh, working this tail in afterwards. All right, just continue working your ribbing. You're going to do this for seven rounds, and then we're going to bind off. See you soon. Our last step is binding off in the pattern loosely. Now, when we say bind off in pattern, what that means is we're going to work the same pattern that we've worked across, knitting to and purling to, as we bind off. So if you've never done that in pattern, we're gonna do that right now. Plus, after that, we will fix this little jog that happens usually when you're making a knit in the round and you finish it off this way. So I'll show you how to stitch that up so it retains that nice, beautiful chain edge along there. We are going to start by knitting the first stitch and if you don't know how to do it loosely, you can also make your knit stitches in an E-wrap, which is winding it around the peg in this direction. You go between the pegs that you're going to be working next. So you go between the one and a two, and then you wrap to the front all the way to the back. And then that's how you work that stitch. If you want to um, do the normal U stitch, you go around it, starting with the previous stitch here and then going towards the um, stitch you're going to work. So I'm just going to knit it this direction. So we're knitting the first peg and then we knit the second peg and then we move the second peg onto the first and then we work that stitch. And when you do that, make sure you don't pull very tight at all. And that way you retain the slack. And we're going to pick it up and move it over. That's the only time we work these two stitches at the same time, you're going to work the one and the two. Now moving on, you're only going to knit the two stitch. So we are, um, well, I said knit, but it could be purl. So now that we've done that set of two, we're moving on to the next one, which would be purl. So we're going to go ahead and purl that stitch instead of knitting it. And instead of replacing it back onto that peg, we're just going to move it over, all right, on top of the one and then work that stitch, pick it up, and move it over to the empty one. And then now we're going to purl the next stitch because that would be purled normally if we continued in the ribbing pattern. Whoops, and see I replaced it back on there, but I didn't need to, I could have just put it right on this peg here, the one peg. We're gonna knit up and over, and then move that stitch to that empty peg. So we're just going to continue to move these stitches in the direction that we are binding off. All right, so now that we've done a group of two in the purl, we need to knit the next two stitches when we get to them. So we're just going to knit the next one, pick it up and over, and work the stitch, move it to the empty one, knit the next one, and pick it up and move it over and work that stitch. Pick it up and move it over. Just make sure that you don't uh, pull it super tight here where it's way too snug because if you start to do that, you'll notice that the peg behind it or the stitch behind it just got a little bit too snug as well. And you can just fix that by gently pulling on the stitches. All right, so I'll leave you to it. Just continue going into um, the pattern uh, all the way around as you did before. If you need to mark your pegs as to which ones are purl, or put a piece of tape on the um, on this uh, knitting board here uh, and marking which ones need to be that way, then you could do that, whatever helps. All right, pause your video, meet you back, and we'll finish this up together. See you soon. Okay, I just purled this last stitch. 
lift it up and over, and we're ready to cut it. Got our tail cut, and then just pull that loop out and lift it off the loom. And then now you see we have that jog in our ending here, right at this last stitch. We are going to form one. Just take your tapestry needle, all right, and then you want to inspect your work, and you can see where my last chain stitch was, and then you can go to the very beginning and see where these two form the first chain. So we're going to go in with our uh, needle through the, uh, let's see, you can go from the outside in around, okay, see that, and go in this way through those two that we just did. You can also go around the other side of it too. So you go in towards the inside and go around to the out. Okay, and then go back around through that stitch and then you're guiding it to the inside of your mitt. And when I do that, you can see how it pulls closed and now you have another chain and it completely finishes that up. And so now you can just turn it inside out and then I'm going to go down this knit stitch area here. This is actually the back. Okay, so we have our purl, and so this shows the knits. And so I'm just going to go around using my tapestry needle. I'm going to go around these little stitches here, kind of whipping it around. And this allows me to pull my, um, my stitch in through here. Let me just do a few, and you can see how it goes right in. See that? It winds right up, and then you can continue... Uh, weaving in all of your ends in this way. So you want to do that on the beginning side here and then weave in your tails where the color change was. And once you're done, I'll show you the finished product. Thanks for joining us today where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon. Uh -huh.